In the late stage of World War II, jet fighters had proven to be the future direction of Air Force development. Famous models such as the Mi-262 and Meteor appeared, but countries quickly realized a problem. The operation and piloting of jet fighters were fundamentally different from propeller-driven fighters, and the Air Force needed specialized jet trainer aircraft to train pilots. Soon after the end of World War II, the Dutch Fokker company discovered a market gap for jet trainer aircraft, and also responded to the bidding from the British side by starting to build an early jet advanced trainer, the Fokker S.14 Mach trainer. Technically, the aircraft was quite successful, but from a commercial perspective, it was a failed product. The first prototype took its maiden flight on May 19, 1951. The aircraft's aerodynamic layout was very similar to the jet fighters of the time, with a full metal structure, low monoplane layout, and extensive use of lightweight alloys. Despite jet fighters at the time striving for higher speeds, the S.14 unexpectedly abandoned features such as the swept wing design, with a maximum speed of only 730 km per hour. The aircraft used front intake and was equipped with a Rolls-Royce RB.37 Derwent 8 centrifugal engine, capable of producing approximately 16 knots of thrust. This series of jet engines was one of the earliest mature products in the UK, also used in the Meteor fighter. Its advantage was reliable operation, but its drawback was that it lacked the power of axial flow, making it suitable for trainer aircraft that did not pursue speed. The engine was installed in the middle of the wings, separated from the front cockpit by a firewall, with a long exhaust pipe extending to the tail. The aircraft used a retractable tricycle landing gear, with shock absorbers on the main landing gear. The nose gear retracted under the cockpit, while the main landing gear folded inward into the wings. The main fuel tank was installed inside the wings, supplied by an electric booster pump. As a trainer aircraft, the S.14 featured a spacious side-by-side -side cockpit, making the cockpit appear relatively flat. Throttle, brakes, and other controls were duplicated, and other controls were mounted on a central pedestal, allowing both the instructor and the trainee to operate them. Both seats were also equipped with ejection seats. The aircraft was also equipped with basic radio, radar, and other equipment, and it was said that they could be dismantled to widen the space and add a third seat for another crew member. Fokker had high hopes for the S.14, as they had taken the lead in the market and hoped to open up the global trainer aircraft market. The aircraft made an appearance at the Paris Air Show and indeed caught the attention of a company in the United States and Brazil. Brazil wanted to establish a production line in their own country to produce 50 aircraft equipped with a different engine for the S.14. Fokker's hopes were ultimately dashed, as even though the S.14 trainer aircraft was considered a good model at the time, only 20 were purchased by the Royal Netherlands Air Force, where they served until 1967. Similar products such as the T-33 and T-37 emerged during the same period, achieving tremendous success in their respective countries. The production of the T-33 even exceeded 6,000 units, indicating the clear commercial benefits involved. The commercial failure of the Fokker S.14 may have been closely related to the limited influence of the Netherlands at the time. The Fokker S.14 trainer aircraft had an empty weight of 3,765 kg, a total weight of 5,350 kg, a length of 13.3 meters, a height of 4.7 meters, a wingspan of 12 meters, a wing area of 31.8 square meters, and a crew of two. It had a maximum speed of 730 km per hour, a cruising speed of 589 km per hour, a maximum altitude of 11,500 meters, and a maximum range of 950 km. The aircraft was not armed, not even with a single machine gun.